2020 is the greatest year of all time for video games. 2007 and 2018 are the two most popular picks for the best year in gaming. To me, it's pretty easy. It's 2018. 2007 was easily the best year for gaming, and it's not close. And I disagree with both of those. 2007 had releases such as Bioshock, Super Mario Galaxy, Call of Duty 4, Halo 3, and the first Uncharted, while 2018 had Red Dead Redemption 2, Smash Ultimate, God of War 2018, Spider-Man, and Celeste. And that's not to say that both of those years didn't have stellar lineups. I mean, they clearly did, but 2020 is unmatched, and I'm going to prove it in this video. Now, I'm not alone, and when I think 2020, I think COVID, and there's no game that represents COVID more than Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing absolutely took over at the beginning of COVID, and it released at the perfect time on March 19th, and was developed by, of course, Nintendo. Now, Nintendo may not have had the biggest output in 2020, but this was their biggest and best release of the year. Animal Crossing New Horizons brought everyone together during COVID. It was a sense of community that I have never felt before in a video game other than this. Everyone was playing this game, and I mean everyone. My grandma was playing this game. You couldn't hop on Twitter for a day in 2020 without seeing a clip or a video of Animal Crossing flying around. It's my favorite game in the Animal Crossing series and the favorite of a lot of people. Now, Animal Crossing is a fun, lighthearted game that helped cheer people up throughout the COVID pandemic, which is, of course, the big feature thing this year. But you know what is the complete opposite of that? The Last of Us Part Two was definitely the biggest blockbuster release of the year. It came out on June 19th and was developed by Naughty Dog. The Last of Us 2 marks the first game in a very long trend that you'll see throughout this video of being very controversial at the time. Perhaps the quintessential example of a piece of media that is tremendously worse than the sum of its parts. Longtime fans of the series hated the new direction that they took this story, while others who were more open-minded appreciated it. Additionally, the leaks that came out surrounding the game before it spoiled the story without giving much context as to why things were done and created this negative narrative around the game before it even came out. But in its years since release, I feel like the general opinion of this game has only gotten more and more positive as time goes on, as it should, because The Last of Us Part Two is one of the greatest games of all time. And some would even consider it to be the greatest game of all time. The 50 greatest games of all time and at number one, we have The Last of Us Part Two. The gameplay is, of course, fun. It's The Last of Us. It's not groundbreaking, but it's fun. But the star of the show is, of course, the story. The only story in all of gaming that I can say tops this one for sure in terms of just being thought-provoking and really lending itself to interpretation is Silent Hill 2. This game truly is a masterpiece, and it's sad that it didn't get the respect it deserved at the time, but I'm glad that everyone's seeing the light now. Now I'd like to shed light on a couple slightly smaller in scale releases that came out in 2020 that are still worth noting. First of all, we have Valorant. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell, hell no, man. man. What the fuck? Hate all you want, but there's a reason it's popular. I've never played it myself. It's still around today and is pretty much just as popular as it's ever been. Also in 2020 was Yakuza Like a Dragon, which propelled the series into the mainstream. It's a fan favorite in a fan favorite series and fan site is being able to maintain its relatable aspect while still having silly and convoluted plotlines. I may have never played it myself, but to, to say it's not at the very top of my backlog would be a lie, because I really want to get to this one. It has since got multiple sequels with Like a Dragon Ishin and Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, as well as becoming one of Sega's biggest franchises in the modern day. And there's plenty of other games from this year on my backlog. Another one of them is... Uh Released on July 17th by Sucker Punch, Ghost of Tsushima was seen as the PS4 swan song before the PS5 came out. It was the second Sony blockbuster release of the year, and fans cited it as being some of the best character writing in games with some incredibly fun samurai gameplay. The graphics in this game are stellar, and the lack of a minimap and using the wind to guide you is actually a really cool mechanic that may not click immediately, but it leads you to discovering more in the world and exploring it more deeply than if you were to just follow a, a marker on your map. This is yet another game that people consider to be the greatest of all time, 
one of the best exclusives that the PS4 ever got, and it's still not even the best of the year. Sony was absolutely on fire this year. They had plenty of exclusives that were absolute smash hits. Surely they don't have any more. Final Fantasy VII Remake by Square Enix was released on April 10th. At the time, fans were a little mixed because it took the story and the series of Final Fantasy VII in a completely new direction. Never did I ever think that Final Fantasy VII would be ruined to this extent. They scrapped the beloved turn-based combat in favor of real-time combat and also made story changes which didn't go over as well as Square Enix probably would have hoped. In the years since, it has gotten a lot more appreciation from fans, however, who is cited as being the best example of these characters. Most Final Fantasy VII fans agree that Tifa, Barret, Cloud, all are depicted best in this game. And yes, the release of Rebirth and that being probably the best game in the entire Final Fantasy series has definitely helped this game's reception. It was still, you know, fantastic at the time. It takes an iffy looking PS1 game and reimagines it to look absolutely beautiful on the PS4. Another banger at the end of the PS4's lifespan. But it was the end of the PS4's lifespan because the PS5 came out this year. and it had some great launch titles. Astro's Playroom is a pack-in title with the PS5. It's a 3D platformer with the PlayStation bot mascot, and I, in my opinion, it is the greatest 3D platformer of all time that is not Mario. Of course, Mario games are in a league of their own, but Astro's Playroom is the best that it gets for non-Mario platformers. It's so fun, it's so creative, and it looks beautiful. To this day, it still might be the best use of the PS5 specifically. It's a great platinum trophy and it's packed with tons of fan service for PlayStation fans and was great, absolutely great game. And a couple other launch titles were great too, like Demon's Souls. It was a very good remake of 2008's Demon's Souls and it's a Souls game, of course it's great. It may not be the best Souls game ever, but it's, it's still good. Oh shit, that's me? And the third noteworthy launch title for the PS5 is Spider-Man Miles Morales. It's just dumb fun to run around New York City beating up bad guys, swinging around. The Spider-Man Insomniac series is just one of those series that I can play and grind for a long period of time and not get bored. The PS5's launch may have been a bit iffy, but it had nothing to do with the game lineup because these three were very good starts to the PS5's lifespan. But the PS4 did not stop going after the PS5 released. On December 9th, CD Projekt Red dropped another blockbuster release. There is actual game-breaking problems with it. It is borderline unplayable on some consoles. Sony is actually issuing refunds for this game and has taken it down from the PlayStation Store. So, Cyberpunk's release may not have been the best. What? <laughs> but after all the updates that were made to make the game actually work, it has since become one of the best RPGs of all time. I've never personally gotten to around to Cyberpunk 2077 yet, but fans cite it as being one of the most immersive gaming experiences ever. And on top of being immersive, they also say it is one of the best looking games ever. It's just one of those games where you feel like you can do whatever you want and you're not bounded by any limitations. And while its launch may have been kinda rocky, it has since gone on to become a fantastic release out of 2020. Another one. Now after all of those games, after all those fantastic games, we have yet to get to the game that is considered by most people to be the game of the year out of 2020. And it's because we're giving the number one spot to Hades. And it's our favorite game of the year. Hades is pretty much hands down the best roguelite ever made. Released on September 17th, Hades was nowhere near as massive of a release as any of the other ones that we've previously covered so far. With each of the previous releases, it's pretty much a moment in time for those. I can remember specifically where I was reading reviews, reading people getting mad about it on Twitter, but with this game, 
I don't remember that. Despite it being a smaller scale release, it was one of the most successful games of the year. With it racking up award after award at the year's end, fans cite it as having a story that unfolds slowly and is very enjoyable. With great music, great weapon variety, it makes you want to keep playing even after you've beat it already. And games like that are really tough to come by, even in 2020. Despite how many great games released this year, Hades is what I see as the fan favorite game, the one that most people consider to be the best out of the year. We're just now getting to it, even after all these other games. With that being said, the second most popular pick for game of the year in 2020 was probably Doom Eternal. Released by Bethesda on March 19th, Doom Eternal is a sequel to the 2016 Doom reboot and it just might be one of the best sequels ever. It takes what was good about Doom 2016 and cranks it up to 11, creating the best Doom game of all time. There's no game that makes you feel cooler when you're playing, and also it has one of the best soundtracks of a game ever. I mean, listen to this music, it's fucking insane. There's a fun arsenal of weapons to mess around with, and some really tight, amazing controls. What more do you really want out of a first-person shooter? And before we end the video, i just like to shout out Omori. According to the biggest fans of the game, it's one of those games where it's just impossible to describe what's good about it without spoiling anything, so I didn't look too deep into it, but I know it's a great game and I know it came out in 2020. <sighs> what a year, am I right? And you know what's crazy about this? I haven't even mentioned the best game in 2020 yet. You never see it Released on March 31st in North America by Atlas, Persona 5 Royal is an expanded version of 2017's Persona 5. It takes what was already considered one of, if not the best JRPG of all time in Persona 5, and just expanded it and leveled it up in every way. It added much needed balance adjustments as well as 20 hours of story. And I also want to mention that this 20 hours of story is the best part of the entire game. And as a matter of fact, they're the best part of any game I've ever played in my life. It has the best soundtrack and the best art direction of any game ever made, as well as fantastic JRPG combat and one of the best stories ever in a game. Additionally, the final villain of the game is the best written character I've ever seen in any piece of media before. And that is the final game that I'd like to mention for 2020. And I'll also throw up a, another, a little bit of a list here with more games that came out this year that were good, that I just didn't want to mention here. So why is this opinion so unpopular despite the clear resume of games here that could definitely put it in contention? I think the biggest reason that this opinion is not popular is because a lot of the games released at the time were controversial. The Last of Us 2 was controversial because of the leaks before spoiling the story without context and making fans go in with a negative attitude towards it and not giving it enough of a chance. Final Fantasy VII Remake was controversial because it wasn't a faithful remake to the original. Cyberpunk 2077 was controversial upon release because of how buggy and glitchy it was, but has since become much better. And the PS5 games weren't even controversial, it's just that no one got to play them because the stock of the PS5 at its launch was horrible. While 2004 and 2007 and 2018 may have been great years, in my opinion 2020 is better than all three of them. So let me know what you guys think in the comments, and let me know what your favorite game of 2020 was, because there's plenty to pick from. Subscribe and like if you enjoyed, and the next video will come when inspiration strikes me next.